Hi, my name is Sean Cavanagh. I'm a PhD student in the groups of David Scanlon at UCL and Aaron Walsh at Imperial. And my research is focused on emerging site photovoltaic materials. In this presentation, I'm going to speak about our work unveiling spontaneous polarization and promising efficiency potential in the novel quaternary chalcohalide material, tin antimony sulfoiodide. So let's get into it. So tin antimony sulfoiodide is a mixed cation, mixed anion quaternary metal chalcohalide, which has recently attracted attention as a quote unquote perovskite inspired material. These are materials which possess similar properties as the lead halide perovskites, such as the combination of a partially oxidized um, NS2 cation with halide anions, with the aim of replicating the high performance of lead-based perovskites while avoiding the presence of lead and achieving a commercially viable level of stability. Chalcogen halides are ideal for this goal, as metal chalcogen bonds are much stronger than metal halide bonds, uh, affording greater thermodynamic stability in this material class. Furthermore, the presence of multiple anion and cation uh, species particularly favours mixed ionic covalent bonding character in these materials, which typically results in strong dielectric screening, which is an effective way of reducing carrier capture uh, by charge defect and thus non-radiative recombination, uh, as well as lattice polarity and other properties associated with defect tolerance. So all these properties are promising signs for the potential application of these materials in optoelectronic devices, but does it actually translate into device performance here? Well, recent work published at the end of 2020 by Ni et al. in the group of Sangil Suk certainly indicates the potential of this material class, demonstrating over 4% over efficiencies in solution process devices alongside excellent air, water and photo stability. This excellent performance in the first experimental attempt demands the attention of the emerging uh, PV community. And so we began a theoretical investigation to understand the atomistic properties of this material and to assess its efficiency potential going forward. So the first step in a theoretical investigation of a material is typically to calculate your optimized crystal structure from which you can then calculate the properties you are interested in, such as the electronic structure and optical absorption. For this, we usually turn to databases like the ICSD or the Materials Project for a starting point or uh, initial guess, and then relax with an appropriate DFT functional. From some XOD analyses from the 1980s, the crystal structure was determined to have the orthorhombic CMCM space group uh, with these infinite chains of um, tin, sulfur and iodine. Um, so these chains here, tin, sulfur and iodine, along the crystal A direction with uh, iodine and antimony located between the atomic chains. However, our calculations indicated that the CMC21 phase was in fact the ground state arrangement for this material, even going to a, a very high level of theory by invoking the random phase approximation to the correlation energy, which is often considered a gold standard for the, predictive, uh, for the prediction of relative formation energies for material polymorphs. The main difference between these two structures is the location of the antimony atoms. Uh, so in going from the centrosymmetric CMCM structure uh, to a non-centrosymmetric CMC21 structure, the antimony atoms move either up or down uh, to fuse with the tin sulfur iodine uh, chains, resulting in these stoichiometric chains along the crystal A direction. Crucially, this results in the breaking up inversion symmetry in the crystal with important implications as we'll see in a moment. After establishing CMC21 as the energetically favored polymorph under static conditions, we computed the phonon dispersions of both structures to query their dynamic or structural stability. So negative frequencies in the phonon dispersions, uh, such as these here, uh, correspond to imaginary phonon modes, which indicate the presence of nearby energy-lowering distortions uh, along certain structural paths, 
So the structure can spontaneously distort to form a lower symmetry, lower energy arrangement, in this case, the non-central symmetric CMC21 phase, which is dynamically stable and has no imaginary modes in its um, phonon dispersion, as we can see here. So essentially, this means that the CMCM phase is found to be a saddle point rather than a true minimum on the potential energy surface. Looking deeper into the experiments done in the 1980s, we see that they did in fact note improved agreement of the XRD data with the structural model when you instead assigned antimony to this split, uh, split 8F wick-off position with 50% occupancy as shown here, um, which corresponds to the direction of the antimony position shift in going from CMCM to CMC21. So what this means, we believe, is that experiment is in fact seeing an average over many different CMC21 configurations, which averages out to a CMCM structure according to XRD measurements. Visualizing the CMCM to CMC21 distortion, we see that it corresponds to oppositely charged ions moving in opposite directions, uh, therefore resulting in a relatively strong lattice polarization of 37 microcoulomb per centimeter squared, placing this material next to the likes of ferroelectric oxide perovskites, such as barium titanate and potassium niobate, in terms of polarization strength, um, well above MAPI and the archetypal photoferroic uh, antimony sulfoiodide. We also calculated the ferroelectric switching barrier using the nudged elastic band method in combination with the distortion symmetry method to ensure the minimum energy path between configurations was identified. Uh, and in doing so, we find a moderate energy barrier to switching of the polarization uh, direction. Uh, so just over 35 milli electron volts per atom in this case, with CMCM representing the transition state. To further investigate the temperature dependent stability of this lattice polarization, molecular dynamic simulations were performed at room temperature and 500 degrees Kelvin. The easiest way to visualize the um, CMC21 symmetry breaking relative to the CMCM phase is to look at the antimony sulfur uh, bond lengths. So, in going from CMCM to CMC21, uh, we go from having two equivalent antimony sulfur bonds here to having one long in orange and one short in blue antimony sulfur bond. And this comes with the concomitant uh, last polarization of 37 micro coulomb per, uh, per centimeter squared. So this allows us to visualize the polarization stability in this material uh, through the changes in the antimony sulfur bond lengths uh, over time during the molecular dynamics runs uh, plotted here alongside the uh, summed probability density of these bond lengths. So for um, the room temperature run at 300 Kelvin, we see a clear distinction of the short and long antimony sulfur bonds with no bond switching, i.e. a short antimony sulfur bond becoming a long, long bond, um, corresponding to no spontaneous switching of the polarization direction. On the other hand, for uh, cheese with 500 Kelvin, we witness frequent switching of the short and long antimony sulfur bonds, resulting in significant overlap of the probability densities. Um, and so we see that this material is essentially approaching a phase transition to the higher symmetry CMCM structure at which point the probability densities will merge and the antimony sulfur bond lengths will become equivalent. So overall, these results demonstrate the stability of lattice polarization in this material at room temperature and that uh, this behavior begins to break down at elevated temperatures as expected. We also calculated the electronic structure using hybrid density functional theory, including spin orbit coupling effects, to find a direct gap of 1.08 uh, electron volts, which is ideal for photovoltaic operation, with a VBM composed of anion P states uh, and a contribution from the tin uh, 5S2 states, 
um, and their VBM arising from iodine P and antimony P states. We find a relatively slow onset in optical absorption at the um, band gap energy. Uh, and looking at the joint density of states, which is essentially a summation of the number of possible vertical electronic uh, transitions at a certain energy, we can attribute this behavior to a weak transition dipole moment uh, at the, in the energy range just above the band gap. From close analysis of the electronic wave functions, we identify the symmetries and spatial separation of uh, VBM and CBM states as the origin of this weak but non-zero uh, transition dipole moment just above the band gap. In the context of photovoltaic operation, the consequence of this slow uh, absorption onset is a requirement for a moderately thick film in order to approach total absorption and maximal efficiency, with um, efficiencies greater than 30% at the radiative limit uh, achievable for a structured surface uh, absorber at thicknesses greater than one micron. Thinking about the potential defect tolerance of this material, we identify several material properties that could promote this behavior, such as a small electronic band gap, um, an antibonding character, high energy uh, valence band maximum due to the interaction of the tin 5S, uh, 5S2 lone pair with both the iodine and uh, sulfur P states at the top of the VBM. Um, we find mixed ionic covalent, ionic, uh, covalent bonding and thus strong dielectric screening, which uh, as mentioned before, can reduce the interaction of our mobile charge carriers with charged defects and thus reduce non-radiative recombination in the material, um, as well as wide conduction and valence bands. Additionally, the atomic chain structure of this material, so along again, these stoichiometric chains along the A direction, uh, could result in benign brain boundaries with no broken bonds and thus minimal recombination activity, uh, as has been noted in antimony selenide, for example. So, in conclusion, we unveil spontaneous symmetry breaking and lattice polarization in this emerging chalcohalide absorber through ab initio techniques previously hidden due to macroscopic averaging in characterization, characterization measurements. This poses potential benefits to photovoltaic efficiencies, for example, through enhanced charge separation and uh, shift current effects. We, de we determine a promising outlook for the efficiency potential of this material and propose that further work uh, on this rediscovered material could prove very fruitful. To end, I'd like to thank my mentors, David Scannon and Aaron Walsh, and of course you for listening. Over and out.